Uh, you can be very intelligent and very good at what you do, and you can still be stupid. This is the last time uh, that we're going to be doing this because uh, gravity's getting us down, obviously, you know, all of that weight upon us, you know, it's on my shoulders, you know, and talking to these globies and these people who dream an awful lot, kind of like does wear you out, kind of like gets tiring. So we're going to do one more demonstration and this should, should seal the deal, of course. So we've changed our setup, we, we, we're using white uh, paper so objects can be seen better. Uh, what else have we done? We've reinforced, we put tape, uh, duct tape, gaffer tape around the bottom there just to reinforce the plate at the bottom um, because we are going to drop and we've also, sorry, we've also placed our gauge closer to the um, tube so it's more, um, so we get a, a better indication of the uh, lack of pressure inside the tube from the vacuum pump. So and what the objects we're going to drop, the objects we're going to drop are these two here. We've done this before but what we're going to do this time is we're going to drop one in air, we're going to drop them in air and we're going to drop them in um, vacuum because uh, we are quite fortunate that our ball bearing, 30 millimeter diameter ball bearing here, um, didn't cause any damage to our um, our vacuum tube. So here we go, we've got 112.28 grams. That is phenomenal uh, compared to what, compared to this piece of uh, um, silicate aerogel. We've put, painted it uh, uh, with uh, black, a black pen, just so it can be seen better in the um, tube. And this gives us a grand weight of 0.17. Phenomenal. It's this shape, so what we're going to do is we are going to, if I can find my cap, how we're going to do this is that we're going to place the, the uh, silicon aerogel there. Um, this ball will touch the perspex, the plastic lid, because of the hole that's cut out. And we're going to hold it together with two magnets. And then once I've found the uh, one's obviously not uh, strong enough to hold the weight of this uh, ball. Um, so when I've got uh, the two, there we go, put those together, there we go, we've got two there, a lot stronger, there we go. And obviously we can see that the silica aerogel there is free to rotate around the uh, Wait there, let's get a better view. We can see that the silica aerogel there is free to rotate around that um, ball, the ball bearing. Okay, so let's pop this in and we'll try a test with air. Let's try a test with air and then we'll try a test in, in vacuum afterwards. Um, there we go. So it should be quite good fun. Hopefully we'll get some good results. But... Um, what we should expect to see is definitely the heavier object, the ball bearing, the 30 millimeter diameter hardened steel ball bearing, um, hitting first, followed by the silica aerogel um, coming in second place. And that should be observed in air and in vacuum, because it's our view that objects do not fall at the same rate in vacuum because objects fall at the same rate, sorry, objects uh, fall at different rates due to their heaviness or their weight, not due to gravity, of course, because the force or the energy or the inertial mass lies within the object and there is not an external force acting on, on, acting on objects as they fall. So we've done that and um, so let's, let's do cameras. Uh, 
on uh, 90 degrees. So are we ready? Are we ready? Yes? Okay, okay then, uh, Peter, let's go. Three, two, one. There. Okay, super. Now what we'll do now is we'll undo and then we'll take, uh, take it apart. Take the objects out. There we go. And set it up again and then evacuate the air. There we go. Superb. Actually, this copper copper comes in very handy. Okay, then, there we go. Uh, let's pop this out. That worked quite well. I've always been a bit worried about uh, dropping that ball bearing in there. There we go, it's coming out. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's the only trouble with these. I can't, I'd never like to be a skydiver because you've always got to get, or a skier, because you've always got to go back up to the top once you're there at the bottom. You know, that's the only worst part of it all. It's the same with this. Once you do your job, you've got to get them out of the tube. Right, okay, they're done. So let's set this back up again. There we go. Very quickly. There we go. Okay, so we're there. So uh, let's get let's get the top on. So we've got spirit level as well. Let's check the vertical, and I'm sure that's pretty good. I don't think you need to look at this because uh, you know I can see that's pretty good. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you don't need to uh, worry too much about vertical. That's good. Okay, right. Okay, super. Do, 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 do. So let's get our two objects. Here we go. Let's pop them back in. You can see the, the ink has stained the lid. There you go. So let's pop that back on. Okay. Let's get our two get our two magnets so let's spin this around so we can see that it's free from there we go we're spinning that around so that's free there we go right there there we go superb are we happy that's that's there Let me see. We spin that around yeah okay yeah we're happy with that okay there, yeah, got to be sure. I don't want to be doing this again, that's for sure. So there we go, there's our... And there, there we go. So, so there we go. So there's no editing to the video, there's no cuts. Um, we're going to hopefully show that uh, there is a, there is a vacuum present within the tube and um, so what we should expect to see in this uh, demonstration is the heavier object fall first uh, and at a much faster rate of fall over the two meter drop so there's there's that and that would mean that the, the reason why they fall is simply because of a property within the object so let's switch the vacuum pump pump. There we go. And we clearly see that the air is being evacuated from the system. There we go. 
superb. It's going down. There we go. So pressures the vacuum gauge only go or the vacuum yeah the vacuum gauge only goes up to or it only goes down to minus one bar. Uh, a lot of them do. Um, it's purely I suppose because that you don't need to go any further down, do you? Because really zero would indicate uh, the presence of a vacuum. So we're going to leave this running for a little while, and um, all ready for um, all ready for drops. And then we'll, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the slow mo, both in air and vacuum, compare them, and you know hopefully we will see that um, the heavier object falls faster and hits the bottom first in air and in vacuum. Uh, the only time you can get two objects to fall at the same rate is if you use identical objects, if you drop identical objects, or if you use a shorter height in which to drop two dissimilar objects to get the same effect of, of the two objects falling at the same rate. Well obviously if we increase that height we'll know that the objects are, are not falling at the same rate, they do in fact fall at different rates. Um, so there we go. I mean, I'm, I'm fully satisfied doing what we've done. Um, obviously, these are only our opinions that we're expressing through our demonstrations. Feel free to do them yourself if you don't trust what we're doing, or if you still feel that objects fall the same way, or if you feel that uh, there's this up-down influence and you want to provide some kind of proof for that, for the existence of that, then uh, I certainly wouldn't recommend this Absolutely. Maybe try um, making a, an object fall sideways. Now that would be quite good if you could do that. That would be great. Um, so there we go. I think we should leave it for a little bit longer. And maybe talk about the weather. Um, talk about uh, talk about dreams. We could talk about dreams. I don't want dreams in my life. I don't want to dream. You know. And when you when we enter into conjecture. Or when we enter into fantasy, you know, that's when we start dreaming. You know, I don't don't want to do that. I, I'm, I'm a very, you know, I'm a very down to earth kind of guy. If, if somebody says to me that they've got a fiver in their pocket, I'd like to see the fiver. Then I know that they have got the fiver. I don't want to be wandering or dreaming. Well, could they have the fiver? It's possible they could have the fiver. They might not have the fiver. I don't want to be like that. So, uh, you know, you, you understand where I'm coming from, don't you? Of course, yes. So, this should be the last one, last video out of our um, gravity drop tests, or our vacuum drop tests, our inertial mass drop tests, our internal energy drop tests. You know, however, you, whatever way you want to look at it, the reason why objects fall is, is a property within the object, and that's what causes the object to fall something within. The force is within us. And that's something that's overlooked. There is, in our opinion there's not an, uh, there's not a force external to us that is pulling us down or pushing us down. The force lies within us. So on that note uh, I think we should get on and do the uh, demonstration. Should we not? Absolutely. Are we ready? So again what we should expect to see is a, the heavier object falling first, leaving behind the lighter object in vacuum. Uh, because the reason why objects fall is because of the property of the object. Absolutely. If these objects fall at the same rate, then we can discount that and put it down to something that's external to the objects. So let's have a let's switch the vacuum off and we're ready to go. Okay. Three, two, one. There. Done and dusted. There we go. Just check the pressure on the uh, vacuum gauge. There we go. And now we're going down. We have way over uh, minus one bar there, didn't we? That time. So there we go. So th there's there's still. There's just under minus one bar still in the tube or still in the system now, so we've done quite well. So let's have a little look at the um, at the uh, recordings of air 
vacuum and compare the two in slow motion. OK? There. Well, there you go. That, uh, that to me um, is uh, satisfies my uh, my uh, what's the word? my inquisitiveness in that the heavier object uh, hit the uh, sponge or hit the bottom first in both on both occasions in air and in vacuum. After looking at the uh, the video footage slowed down in air, the uh, the ball bearing actually just shot down leaving the piece of silica aerogel way behind and when we looked at the uh, video footage of vacuum we saw the um, ball bearing hit the sponge here and the aerogel the silica aerogel was around this point here so the distance was at least half a meter compared to when both objects left the um, the cap at the nearly the, half a meter nearly half a meter absolutely uh, compared to the distance at the top of the uh, tube it's a clear indication that objects fall at diff different rates in vacuum it's a clear indication that what causes objects to fall is something that is a property of the object and not an external force or influence acting on the object. Um, so there you go, I mean we don't need to do any more, it's all done and dusted, thanks ever so much for all your comments that you've left, uh, and now we can leave gravity behind and move on to better things. The earth isn't round, it's flat. How do you know? I've observed it in all my travels over Europe, it's flat, everywhere it's flat.